Hello everybody, how are we? Come and join me. Okay, this is actually the second last mindset session of this programme. Okay, so with that in mind then, it's ultimately my responsibility to help you see past a four-week programme, to create some sort of sustainability with this programme moving forwards into your life. And that's what I want to talk to you about tonight. Um, it's all about the mindset of change and implementing change, but actually seeing the the success through to the next stage, the next level, the next right move. Anybody, anywhere could do a short-term four-week programme and then completely regress and go back to their old ways and actually end up in a worse state than they actually started in. And when I say state, I mean it might be a psychological state, a spiritual state, a physical state, um, and that's yours to have and own. However, that's not my aim. My aim is to create lasting change, which is why I put so much into Feel Look B to help you renegotiate your health conditions, your uh, blood um, profile, your health markers, your psychology, your spirituality, and maybe you're not in touch with that yet. So that's the next stage for us on lifestyle, um, where we amalgamate spirituality, physicality, psychology, and embeds the principles to enable you to create lasting change. So whilst you join me, I'll peruse my notes and then we'll get started, okay? How many of you, is, is, is this you actually? I've tried everything and nothing works for me. Um, I can't do that. Mm, I'll never manage that. Um, I don't think I'm going to be able. Um, are you happy? I ask. I'm okay. Um, do you enjoy your work? That's fine. It's, it's, it's okay. Actually, I'm all right, to be honest. I'm, like, I'm just big boned. I've been big boned all my life and I'll forever be big boned. So I'm okay the way I am. And you constantly self soothe. You find softeners to tell yourself. Yeah, I'm a little bit round. Bought and paid for, so everything's okay. But ultimately, if your physicality and your physique and your, your uh, physical state impacts on your health and your longer term health and actually your life. Isn't it really important to be really, really honest with yourself about lots of different things? And it cuts through relationships and friendships and, and careers. So this information tonight is kind of like uh, in everything. It will relate to everything in your life. But is that you? Tonight it's time to be honest with yourself. It's no longer okay to pretend and mask and just get on with it. If you want to change, then the first stage is being absolutely honest with yourself. And that's sacrosanct. And anything else you do here on in, you will have conviction and you will go at it like you've never been fired up for anything in your life. But if you're not honest with yourself and you continue to make excuses and self-soothe and find softeners to justify the situation, the person, the place, the body shape, nothing will ever change and you will forever come back to nothing works for me. And you will always find an excuse. So I'm going to suggest to you that it's not everything that doesn't work for you. It's you that doesn't work for you. And I want to help you change that. 
So I'm going to talk you through some strategies, tips, tricks and techniques that you can actually think about over the coming days. So as we approach the end of Fear Look B and the end of this particular journey and you embark on my lifestyle programme, that you're well versed and geared up for what's to come next. Because it's a next. What happens next? It's not that's it finished. See you later. That was fine. That was great. It's not that. <laughs> I told you at the start, this is only the very tip, the very start of the most incredible journey for you. And when you're committed to change, everything will change. Okay. There are three beliefs that create lasting change. And the first one is the realisation that it must change. Is it your health? Is it the, the fact that you can't do a sit-up and you think, wow, how did I get to this age? And how did I get to this level of immobility? And how did I let that happen? Maybe your 10,000 steps are a real chore for you. Never mind working out. Think about the basics here. You're finding things, even playing with the kids or the grandkids, a real chore. Realising that it must change is one of the first beliefs of lasting change. So bear that in mind. Write it down, please. Realising that that thing must change. The second belief is you need to involve I in it. I must change. I must change that thing. So it moves away from an it, it moves away from the realisation to it becoming about you making the change. So you've been honest with yourself, you've realised that the thing, the situation, the person, the place, the job, the belly has to change and then you bring it closer to you, I have to change this because nobody else can change it but you. So, and you just let these things, these words sit with you, I must change. And the last belief here is, I can change. You get what you believe in life. Whatever your set of beliefs are, you generally follow through on what your beliefs are and that's what shows up in your life. A belief is something that you, that you think with absolute certainty is the meaning of something. I, I believe that's the case. It's the meaning that you place on it, but you believe it with absolute certainty. That's a belief. It's just a feeling. So it's a, um, a feeling of absolute certainty that that thing is, is what it is. You're certain and you feel it. That's a belief. So that last stage there is, I can change it. You can change it. So it go moves from the thing that you've realised that has to change. You bring it into, I need to change it. And then the last belief is, I can change it. You have to believe that you can. Because you, if you believe that you can't, it won't happen. And if there's one thing Felix B has demonstrated and showed you, if you've been all into this programme, you could change things really, really easily. And it's the most significant thing in life is your health. And you can change it. And you've changed it in three weeks just. But only in week four. And look at the changes in you. Your face shape, your eyes are sparkling, whiter and brighter. Your waist's come in. You're actually moving more than you've ever moved. You're thinking about psychology and you're thinking about your mindset and where you're at at your life, where you've been, addressing that. And actually thinking, I'm going to use all that, the good and the bad, for good, because of the lessons that I've learned to move me forward. You've identified your values and your beliefs, and you're at a place now when you're ready for change. So that's the three beliefs that will create lasting change. You live out every day, all day, your beliefs. So if it's, I can't do that, I won't manage that, then that's what you'll live out. And that goes back to, gro that goes back to growth and fixed mindset. If you believe that you can, growth mindset, I can't yet, I'm not, I'm not there yet, but I will because I'm going to show up, I'm going to work hard, I'm going to do X, Y and Z and I'm going to do it because I can do it. That's a growth mindset, a fixed mindset. Please bear this in mind for your children as well and your young people and your partners. 
If you can identify when someone has a fixed mindset, it's like a switch. It's really, really easy to change. But sometimes you don't know what you don't know. And people are so unaware of it. So if your child is studying for an exam and they're saying, I can't, I'll never manage this, and it's negative self-talk, spin it for them. Do this work. Go through the three stages of beliefs to create lasting change, what we've just been through. You can do it. And you'll help them change their psychology and how they're thinking about things to actually help them and aid them into that exam. Another realisation is, everything that's happened in the past, you must realise that that's not your future. So if that's giving you anxiety and worry and keeping you stuck, that does not need to be your future. The, what happened in the past stays in the past. And you can't keep living your past. You cannot live your past. It's only the future and how you move forward that matters. So if you've been addicted to sugar and refined carbohydrates and coke and um, you eat a lot of junk food and you drink a lot of alcohol and all the things that we don't do in this Feel It Be Four Week program, um, then you must realise that you can separate yourself from where you were and where you're at now. And that's really healthy to do. Self-reflect and say, that's what I was like three weeks ago, but look at me now. And you celebrate that. You say, wow, that's why every Monday I make you accountable. I hold you accountable. And I say to you, well done for showing up. Well done for telling me what you've done this week. Celebrate your progress. Celebrate the weight loss. Celebrate how amazing you feel. And also, if you've not stuck to the plan or you've not done as well as you thought you would do because you skipped the 10,000 steps or you didn't do the workouts, self-reflect and go, this week, I'm going to do that. I missed it last week, but I'm going to do it this week. Nothing is ever a failure. It's only a failure if you don't learn by it. If you learn by it, it can't be a failure. It can't. Learning is everything. And it will propel you forward to the next level. Okay. There's a few things that will help you create lasting change. And on top of the beliefs, the first thing is leverage. When you actually link up the fact that your present set of circumstances are going to be more painful than the future, if you were to continue on the way you're at now and you think, oh, it's going to be terrible, it's going to be, um, I'm going to feel horrendous if I keep going the way I'm going. That immediacy and that feeling and when it hits your gut, that association of pain and discomfort and um, being, being unhappy and feeling unhappy, that's leverage. And leverage is like a motivation. I'm going to give you a real life example here. And again, I'll revisit my dad's situation. My dad was a smoker since he was really, really young. You know that my dad died at the age of 56. But when he was young, he started smoking. And I'm talking really young. Um, way before 15, even. So he'd been smoking all of that time. And when his health started to deteriorate, and he was diagnosed with atherosclerosis, which was a nar narrowing of the artery, he went to the doctors because he was getting terrible pains in his legs. And the doctor says, Jim, you're going to have to stop smoking. My dad's a heavy drinker, heavy smoker. And he says, okay. Left the doctors, came home, never stopped smoking. Didn't happen. Thought about it, never done it. The next time he went back, the doctor says to him, Jim, you're going to have to stop smoking or else you're going to have to have your leg amputated. Boom. Right there, that day, my dad never touched a cigarette again. Nothing from that day. In fact, I've still got my dad's tobacco tin, would you believe that? And there's tobacco still in it. Um, so there was enough leverage, motivation, to move my dad from a psychological feeling and a, a gut feeling of wow, that is going to cause me way too much pain in the future, so I need to change. 
when the pain and the fear and the immediacy of that thing is going to happen and you, you, the overwhelming feelings of pain hit your gut, that could be enough to make you change. And most of the time it is. But you've got to feel that level of immediacy and discomfort and say, whoa, no, I can't. That's when you'll change. And until that point, you will think of every excuse under the sun to go, I can't do that. I can't stick to that. No, I'll just have that instead. Nothing works for me. You've never actually felt it in the pit of your stomach. You've never been desperate enough to change. And it's not until something happens, and it's usually a diagnosis, a health diagnosis, that you make the changes. And I'm telling you, you do not need to wait for that diagnosis. You could make the changes now. You now know why we eat how we eat. Do I ever drink alcohol? Yes, I do. I've told you this. Do I ever eat sweeties now and again? Is it my staple? Is it what I do every day? Is it sometimes I don't do every week? Sometimes I don't do it for a month, but sometimes I will. So it's not that you've got to be 100% strict and on plan for forever, but there's an element of flexibility, of come and go, and to see what really works for you. You have to go beyond this four weeks, jump into lifestyle and create a flexibility for yourself that works for you. While adhering to the general principles of feel loop be, definitely, because it's health promoting, it's everything. So, leverage and understanding that you need that leverage to change. Sometimes you're not enough. Sometimes you're not important enough for your own self to make the changes. Sometimes you need to do it for someone else. It might be your children, it might be your partner, it might be somebody else or something else. You think, I'm going to have to do that for them. So sometimes you're not enough. And if that thing, that person, that, that situation is leverage and it gives you the motivation to change, then great, but just realise that you need that leverage. The reason why you don't change is because you think the change itself is painful. You get fearful when you don't drink alcohol. You get fearful when you don't eat chocolate because you've been so... It's been part of your world and the thought of not having it is scary for you. But actually, when you go on lifestyle and you have a bit of chocolate and it's not the end of the world and you still keep all your your amazing benefits and you're, you're thriving, you can see how it could potentially work in terms of a sustainability in your life and, and actually going long game and committing to the plan. 80-20, for example. Staying on plan mostly, but now and again, you do what you do if that's what you choose to do. Some people stay on this plan forever and they don't change and they thrive, obviously. Some people make tweaks to to what we're doing, to the meal plan, and still thrive. Their health markers are great, they're fit, they're healthy, they've got a great mindset because we're doing the work all of the time, it never stops, and we're on to the next level, and the next level. They keep really close contact with the doctor and their blood reports. So you constantly monitor yourself and self-reflect. Am I doing okay here? Is everything good? Do I feel good? So last thing on this, when we see that not changing is more painful than changing, that's when we'll change. Okay. So you've decided that you want to change you must realise that the pattern needs to be interrupted. The old pattern, the old habit has to be interrupted. Nothing works for me, so you regress, you go back to normal, and you're sitting on the city and you watch the telly again. You're not doing your steps. You're eating all the stuff that you think is healthy, and it's low-calorie this and low-calorie that, and actually you're flooding your body full of refined carbohydrates. Your hormones are all over the place again. So is your blood sugar, and you've never felt worse. But because it's low calorie and we're trying to control the number, you know that that doesn't work. So to interrupt the pattern is really important. What's kept you in those old patterns in the past? What about the people that you surround yourself with? What about the the people that you your social circle? Do they keep you stuck? 
dangling carrots to come out every weekend, let's go out for a drink, and maybe drink tips you over the edge, because you go out for a drink, you overdo it, you spend the next day hungover, when you're hungover you want to eat all the food that you know isn't good for you, so you end up eating it, you feel terrible for two and three days, and actually you've lost half the week. And half your wages, actually, because of the money that you've spent on the nights out, the taxis, the takeaways, um, the alcohol. So actually, no wonder you feel terrible, because there's nothing to be gained by that at all. I lived that life years ago myself. And actually, when I look back now, I think, that's horrible. That, that, you know, that hamster wheel of same old, same old every weekend, getting ready to go now, getting the excitement to go out and then actually suffering for days because of alcohol and the fear, the depression, the anxiety that you feel after it. Horrendous way to live. But some people, and it might be you too, you're, you're still living that way. But you don't need to, it's a choice. Remember, it's a choice. By the way, the, I'm not judging anybody Nobody, there's no judgments here. I'm just trying to help. So breaking that pattern, stop spending time with the people. Stop buying the food so it's not in the cupboard. Maybe not go to the pub and say that you're going to drink a soft drink. If you can't, then don't. Remember, turn your shoulds to musts. If there's something that you ah, should really do that, it won't happen. But if you must avoid the pub or you must not buy the biscuits, it won't happen. I shouldn't really buy that, but I'll buy it anyway. Turn your shoulds to musts. And the last one is create an empowering alternative. What is the alternative to the smoking for my dad? Tried to keep himself busy and it worked. Um, done different things. When he felt like having a cigarette, um, he would do something different, and it worked. So he had the leverage, he broke the patterns, and he created an empowering alternative. And he got involved in things that would take his mind off it, and actually he felt good about himself in terms of stopping the cigarette. So he celebrated that win. That was amazing for my dad. In fact, nobody could believe it. We were like, wow, I can't believe you've done that. So he felt good about it, and it was a really good, uplifting feeling for him. So creating an, alter an empowering alternative. So what is that for you? Is it you know, joining a, a health club, a gym, going to yoga? We've got yoga and Pilates on our lifestyle. We've also got workouts. That might be that for you. So where before you would sit down and watch telly and eat biscuits, you might be working out with me. You might be doing the yoga or the Pilates. What is the empowering alternative for you? You've interrupted the pattern, but now it's time to see it through. Lasting change will happen when you break the pattern, but you see it through. You constantly need to show up. So commitment, doing the small things. I say this often, and some people say, don't sweat the small things, but I say absolutely do sweat the small things. The small things are really, really important. The baby steps, because the small baby steps end up being the, the major steps forward and strides forward. But because they've been small, it didn't feel too overwhelming for you. You just work your way forward a little bit at a time. Next level next level, and then the next level. Before you know it, you look back, you think, what? I can't believe that I achieved that. I didn't think I was able to do this at day one. And now look at me. And you're going to feel amazing. And you'll celebrate every stage. And I'll celebrate with you. I'll be your biggest supporter and biggest cheerleader because that's what I do. And that's really important. You have to be told, well done you. That was really, really hard what you've done. Congratulations. In fact, come here, jump in for a cuddle and you get a virtual cuddle and it makes you feel on top of the world. That's what you need to celebrate those times. So commitment and dedication, celebrating your wins. And remember I said to you, there's nothing built self-confidence and self-esteem like you showing up for yourself 
and doing the hard work, choose your hard. If hard work is 10,000 steps, then that's maybe your hard. Dying of cancer is definitely hard. Diagnosis is definitely hard. Losing parents to alcoholism and drugs, that's definitely hard. 10,000 steps, not really that hard. But perspective is important. So when you've done the hard work, the meal prep, the workouts, the yoga, the Pilates, you've listened to the mindset and you're doing the work. And actually you get to a point you go, I'm changing. I actually feel a shift and a change. That's when you'll self-reflect and you'll build esteem and self-confidence like never before. And at that point, you will go for that job. You will get that house that you've been after. You'll go to the bank, you'll make it all happen because you'll have the confidence. You'll get the new relationship that you want. You'll make the necessary changes because the pain of staying the same is too great and you want different, you want to change and you'll make that change. But you have to keep showing up. This is a lifelong process now. I'm con- I learn constantly, all day, every day I learn. I learn about you, I learn about different subject areas, and I love it. It's If I'm not learning, I'm dying. I don't like it. But it's progress, and it won't always go to plan. Sometimes you'll fall down, sometimes you'll be on holiday, and sometimes you'll have too much to drink, and you'll end up drunk, and the next day you'll think, oh, what have we done that for? But you'll get back on the horse again on the Monday because you know that it works. And you know that actually when you show up for yourself and you're on plan and you stick to it, the best things happen. So many of my clients, my longer term clients, and I know them personally now, a lot of them, um, because we've had various different events and retreats and we meet up. um, They've cuddled me, held me close and said, thank you so much. I got that job because I feel Luke B. Some people cuddle me and say, thank you so much. I was trying for a baby for years. And when I came on to feel Luke B, you told me it was possible. And I'm now pregnant. Some people cuddle me really, really tight and don't let me go and say, do you know what? I had the courage to step out of that that friendship, that social group, where I felt pressured and bullied and intimidated and now I'm, I can't believe that I left it so long. I should have done it years ago. This isn't about body shape and body weight. This is about major changes. And this permeates everything. This isn't about weight loss, this stuff. This is about your life. This is about how you think, how you operate in the world. It's hugely powerful. And when you get it, you get it. And you don't let it go. So you're there, you're going to celebrate yourself, you're going to reward yourself, you're going to reinforce, I'm great, I'm powerful, I'm amazing, I can do this. You've got a growth mindset, you've made the changes, you've interrupted the pattern, you're showing up, you're consistent, you are living the dream, you're in a state of flow, and actually nothing is going to bob you down. Nothing. And that there is living. That is living. Flying under the radar with, I'm all right. I'm four stone overweight, I'm three stone overweight, I'm skinny fat, or I've got metabolic syndrome, or I've got type 2 diabetes, or, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just big bones, or, ah, are you happy? No, I'm not that happy. I'm, oh, I'm okay. Yeah, I'm all right. Self-soothing is not what you deserve. You deserve the best. Whatever the best means for you, because it's different from me to you. Own it. Whatever the best means for you. You deserve that. You deserve to give, gift yourself that. And that's why Feel It Be is the most incredible gift to give to yourself because you can reset, you could self-reflect, you could think about your actions and what you do and who you are in the world. And you're free to do so, completely judgment-free. You're safe here. And you all deserve to feel that safety, which is why this community is so amazing and so strong and so powerful. And it's why thousands of people have done Feel It Be the world over. Different countries, different time zones, you name it, with huge success. But it's time for the next move, the next right move for you. And that is long game. How how can we create sustainability from this? And it starts with this stuff. 
The meal plans are secondary. We'll deal with that on Lifestyle. We'll deal with that later. It's this stuff. It's how you think. It's showing up for you and realising that you are so damn worth it. Be excellent. It's time to be excellent. The world needs you to be excellent. And you've got it in you to be excellent. And don't you forget it. The feelings of lasting change will make you feel excited. They'll make you feel free. Free from food. Free from the, the constraints of needing to binge eat and, and find sugar and, or you're going to die and something really bad's going to happen to you. You're going to sprout two heads or something crazy like that. Um, you will feel reward and when you rewire that old pattern of thinking and those old habits and you realise that it takes 66 days to change the habits that you need to embed for moving forward, then you're in. Helmets on, we're going in. Have a great day, afternoon or night, wherever you are in the world. <laughs>